In this video, we are going to apply what we know about how to find the arc length to finding surfaces of revolution. So we just spent some time learning about how to find the length of the arc, and essentially what we want to do now is apply that to finding the area of the surface of revolution. And what I mean by that is if I have a graph of a function, and I revolved that graph around, say, the x-axis, and we've been doing this a lot lately, so I'm sure you can sort of visualize what's going on. But if I only cared about the surface area, so I wanted to know the surface area of the outside of this figure. So obviously this would make a bit of a cone shape. And if I just wanted to know the surface area of the outside of this figure, essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying, let's take the circumference of the circle. Now remember the circumference of a circle is just two pi r. So if I take that multiplied by the arc length, then that's going to give me the surface area of that figure. So that's all I'm doing here. Here's the formula that we just used. And notice I've only written the one in terms of x, but you know how to do it in terms of y. The only way, or the only thing I have to do to change it to the area of the surface of revolution is multiply it by two pi and then r of x. And so r of x, instead of just being r, r of x is going to be a function in terms of x that gives us the radius. And we're very familiar with doing that from all of our work with finding the volume. But if you'll notice, this part is exactly the same, which is the length of the arc. And so that's all we have to do is essentially multiply it by uh, the circumference of the circle. So let's take a look now at an example to find the area of the surface generated by revolving the curve of y equals 2 radical x about the x-axis on the interval from 4 to 9. So from my picture, I'm really only looking at this part, this arc. Now again, keep in mind what would happen is that I would have this reflected about the x-axis. And so what I'm looking at is a figure that looks something like this. And again, I only want the surface area. So I'm only interested in this part on the outside. I'm not looking for volume. I'm looking for the surface area. Now I'm going to use the formula that we just discussed. So to find that, I'm going to take 2 pi and then times the integral from a to b of r of x, which is the circumference, and then the arc length, which is 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. So that's the formula we just discussed. So let's see what we can find. Now we know that this is going to occur on the interval from 4 to 9. So no big secret there. I don't have to do any math to figure that out. I have 2 pi from 4 to 9. And now I have to figure out what is r of x. So I'm rotating this about the x-axis. So again, r of x is just the radius. So we've used big R in the past, but really that's what we're doing is trying to find what is that value. And that value would of course be two radical X because that would give me the Y value of the function. The Y value is equal to two radical X. So two radical X goes here. Now to do the other part, this is the part that we're familiar with already. So the part we're familiar with is where quite often, like I said, we'll kind of go off to the side and do a little bit of work. So if f of x is equal to 2 radical x, then f prime of x squared would be the square root and again, I'm going to write this as 2 and then x to the 1 half. So the derivative of that would be 2 times 1 half x to the negative 1 half. By just doing some simplification, 2 times 1 half is just 1. So I have x to the negative 1 half. Or I could write that as 1 over the square root of x. Now, if I want to square that, 
which of course I do. Squaring that gives me x to the negative 1 half times 2, so x to the negative 1 is f prime of x squared, or 1 over x. So that's what I'm going to plug in up here. So this is the square root of 1 plus 1 over x dx. So far, hopefully you're with me. Now let's see what we can simplify or make a little bit easier about all of this. So I'm able to take this 2 and this 2 and combine those to get 4 pi on the outside. And I'm able to combine what I have here by multiplying that x times both the 1 and the 1 over x. So now I have the integral from 4 to 9 of still inside the square root, I'm taking x times 1, so that's x, and I'm taking x times 1 over x, which is x over x, or 1. So that's simplified quite nicely, actually. And now from here, it's pretty straightforward. Again, instead of writing it as the square root, I'm going to write this to the 1 half power just to make things easier. So now I have 4 pi. And to find the antiderivative of this, I'm going to take x to the 3 halves, uh, sorry, x plus 1 to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, so 2 thirds, and then x plus 1 to the 3 halves. And I don't have to worry about the chain rule on this one because the derivative is 1. And again, evaluating from 4 to 9. So again, I'm going to get the 2 thirds out of there just because it's in the way. So I have 8 pi over 3. And then I have x plus 1 to the 3 halves from 9 to 4. So this gives me 8 pi over 3, and then I have 9 plus 1, or 10 to the 3 halves, plus 4 plus 1, which is 5 to the 3 halves. And again, if I were able to make this a nice, neat solution, I would not go to a decimal just for the fun of it, but because there is no square root, perfect square root of 10, I'm just going to uh, use my calculator from here, and you should be able to come up with 171.258 as your solution. So again, know how to plug that into your calculator to find that solution. Let's take a look now at finding the area of a surface uh, generated by revolving something about the x-axis. So again, as you can see, I've already drawn the arc for you. And if I were to reflect that arc across the x-axis, it's going to look something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Really, you don't need to draw the picture for any of these. It just, if you're a visual person, it might help you to understand what's going on. So if I'm trying to find the area of the surface revolved about that curve, Remember, I'm going to just copy that formula for you. We have 2 pi integrating from C to D of R of Y, which is just the radius of our figure, and then 1 plus G prime of Y squared dy. So let's see what I know without having to do any work. Without having to do any work, I know that my limits of integration are 1 and 2 because that's given to me. So 2 pi integrated from 1 to 2. And now let's take a look at r of y. So again, this is where the picture comes in handy. If I think about drawing this line in, this value would be r. Now how would I find that value? Well, that's just the y value of my function. And lucky for me, it's already in terms of y. So I'm just going to replace r of y with y. Now let's take a look at this whole thing. So remember, my method is to just find all of this and then plug it in. So if you find the whole thing and plug it in, that's fine too. But I'm going to take a look at g prime of y. 
uh, and then squaring it. So what I have is, here's my function. I have x is equal, and this is, x is the same of, as g of y. One third y squared plus two to the three halves. Now I want to find g prime of y, and then I want to square that. So if I took the derivative of g of y, I have my one third, I would take it then times three halves y squared plus two, subtract three halves by one giving me one half, and then chain rule says take the derivative of two y, I'm sorry, y squared, which is two y. And again, I'm going to need to square all of this, but I'm going to simplify it a little bit first. So if I do some simplification here, those threes will cancel out, the twos will cancel out, and that gives me y from here, and then y squared plus two to the one half, and that's everything. And then I'm going to square it. If I square that, that's going to give me y squared, because squaring y gives me y squared. And then squaring this, remember one half times two gives me y squared plus two to the first power. So here's my g prime y, and again, I can go ahead and uh, distribute the y squared as well. So that gives me y to the fourth plus two y squared. So that's what I'm going to plug in for g prime of y squared. So that gives me, so r of y was just y, and then all of this is the square root of one plus, and then this is y to the fourth plus two y squared. Uh, dy. With me so far? I sure hope so because you can't talk back to me. So I'm just going to assume that you are right there and you know exactly what I'm doing. Now from here I am just going to do some simplification before I integrate. And the first thing I notice here is that I have what looks to be a perfect square. So let me just write it so that it's a little bit easier to understand. I have the square root of, I'm going to write the y to the fourth first plus two y squared plus one. And I notice that this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square and this is twice the product of those perfect squares. So what I'm saying is I can rewrite the radicand as the square root of y squared plus one quantity squared. Again, just because it's a perfect square uh, trinomial. So that means, again, recopying everything else I'm not dealing with, if I have the square root of something that's squared, that leaves me with just the y squared plus one, which makes it nice. So now the only thing I have to do is distribute that y before I integrate. I'm going to do it on the same line just because I'm running out of room as I always do. So from 1 to 2 I'm going to distribute the y so that gives me y cubed and distribute the y so it's plus y dy. So now I'm going to actually integrate which gives me y cubed would be y to the fourth over 4 and y would be y squared over 2. And I'm integrating from 1 to 2, which gives me 2 pi. And then I'm going to plug in the 2 first. So 2 to the fourth power is 16 over 4, which is 4. 2 to the second power is 4, divided by 2 is 2. So 4 plus 2 minus, if I plug in 1, 1 to the fourth power is 1, divided by 4 is 1 fourth. And if I plug in 1 to y squared, so 1 squared divided by 2 is 1 half. So I have 2 pi still on the outside. 4 plus 2 is 6. And if I add 1 fourth and 1 half, remember 1 half is the same as 2 fourths, so that's minus 3 fourths. So now if I take 6, 
and I subtract 3 fourths. Remember, that's just making 6 into 24 over 4 by multiplying everything by 4. And so I have 2 pi times 24 minus 3 is 21 fourths. And then doing some reduction here with the 2 and the 4 gives me 21 pi over 2. And that is my final solution for the area of the surface generated by that function. Up next, we're going to take a look at work, 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 or just work.